Hi, I'm Miles. Today we're going to be talking about the iGel Extra Galactic Airway Device. This is the Committee on TCCC approved Extra Galactic Airway Device because it has a gel filled cuff instead of an air filled cuff. There's no need for monitoring, makes it easier to use. Just because a casualty is unconscious does not mean that a surgical crike is immediately indicated. An extra glottic airway device may be used, but will only be accepted by a patient who is deeply unconscious. If in doubt whether or not a casualty should get an extra glottic airway device, an NPA may be a better option. However, for casualties with facial trauma or facial burns with suspected inhalation injury, an NPA or an EGA may not be adequate to control these airways. In these instances, a surgical crike may be a better option. The eye gel comes in three adult sizes, size 3, 4, and 5, based off the casualty's weight. Size 4 is the most common for military use, and is sized for casualties 110 to 200 pounds. Size 5, the adult large, is for patients over 200 pounds, and size 3 is for patients 65 to 110 pounds. The eye gel has many features, including a protective cradle that maintains the device's shape when stored, a port for a gastric tube to allow gastric decompression of the casualty, port for BVM attachment, a bite block about halfway up internal to the device, a gel filled cuff at the base, and the shape of the device resists rotation on insertion. Before performing the procedure, additional equipment that you'll need is surgical lubricant, a means to secure the device, whether it be tape or gauze or a securing strap, monitoring equipment that you will need will be pulse oximetry, and a means to measure end tidal CO2, whether it be electronic or colorimetric. Go ahead and remove the eye gel device from the protective cradle placing a little bit of surgical lubricant on the tray of the protective cradle. You're going to go ahead and lube up the eye gel on all sides, making sure to remove any excess lubricant. You can insert the eye gel with the patient in the neutral position, but ideally you'd like to position this airway first. You can do that by either the jaw thrust in a patient with C-spine precautions or the head tilt chin lift. We're going to use the scissor technique to open his mouth. Going to grasp the device by the bite block and then go ahead and insert the device. Introduce the leading soft tip into the mouth of the patient towards the hard palate. Glide the device downwards and backwards along the hard palate with a continuous but gentle push until a definitive resistance is felt. Once insertion has been completed, the tip of the airway should be located into the upper esophageal opening with the cuff located against the laryngeal framework. The incisor should be resting on the bite block. Once the eye gel is in place, you need to go ahead and secure it using either tape or a securing strap like this one I got out of a Crikey kit. Go around the patient's neck and secure the tube with tape. You do the same. Once the device is secured, if end saddle CO2 monitoring is available, go ahead and monitor the patient's end tidal CO2 with capnography, inserting it at the end of the eye gel device, and continued monitoring with pulse oximetry, monitoring the patient's oxygen saturation. If your casualty requires ventilation, simply attach the BVM to the BVM port and ventilate as required. And remember to document all your care on a DD1380.